Glory be to Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, we would like to welcome you from the main offices of the head of the church of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv. We are at the, the place, at the country that have been fighting the Russian aggression. In this studio, we would like to welcome the head of the church, uh, his beatitude, Sviatoslav Shevchuk, and the bishop of the diocese of uh, Rockwell Center, New York, Bishop John Barris. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, your beatitude. Uh, during the, from the beginning of the uh, Russian aggression, uh, you have uh, received many delegations from uh, different churches and uh, the countries who come here to show their support and solidarity. Would you be so kind to tell us why is it important for you, for the people of Ukraine, for our church, those visits of the dignitaries that come here? Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for coming, thank Your you Excellency. <laughs> Um, you know, really, right now, Ukraine is under a great pain, increasing pain. Ukraine society today is like a, an open wound. And we are very sensitive to each word, to each visit, to each gesture that our brothers and sisters throughout the world are showing to us. And um, very often in such a dramatic circumstances, people would ask priest, bishop, some fundamental questions. Why? Why this hap this happening to me? Does God forget about us? How we can survive? And your visit is some sort of answer to this question. We are not forgotten. We can withstand, survive in the midst of such, such a dramatic uh, 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 historical circumstance because we are not forgotten. We are not alone with our pain. And thank you, Your Excellency, for coming, being with us, showing us solidarity. Um, I, I think your visit um, in itself is like a message message which is so important for us not only some material humanitarian help but your kindness your open heart saves life so thank you for visiting us today in Kyiv and thank you for everything that you are doing that uh, Catholics in USA are doing for uh, uh, simple people uh, in, uh, of Ukraine thank you for saving lives your beatitude uh, i'm so grateful to to have the time with you and our conversations with archbishop goodziak have been so very powerful one of the most powerful dimensions of our conversations is your presence to the people daily through you have a daily message with your people you were saying just how Ukraine is an open wound and you with the risen the wounds glorified wounds of the risen Christ you're willing to help touch the wounds of your people and to be in, so, in pre presence to them could you describe how you do it each and every day and some of the key messages that uh, you've been communicating to your people well let me sh share a story how those messages started <laughs> I remember the first day uh, when we, we received this horrible news that war is going on. And many people throughout the world would call me constantly, each minute, asking me, are you still alive? And that question, after two, three, four hours, became a torture. <laughs> and I told to my secretary, we should record the message. I have to show up myself that I'm really still alive. 
And then those messages became a daily conversation with our people. Not only uh, enjoying being alive, but also daily we reflect how we can help each other, how we can serve to the others. For me personally, those messages is a possibility to verbalize my own pain. But also it's like, you know, a possibility to mm, be voice of the pain of my people to the world. So, um, it is a voice of the Mother Church, which cares about its own children, but also a voice uh, of the Church who speaks up in behalf of voiceless people. So, thank you for listening to us. <laughs> thank you for being uh, attentive to the uh, voice of the suffering people of Ukraine. Your Beatitude, the sacred liturgy, is so powerful and to be able to con celebrate the sacred liturgy with you and the beautiful chantings and the glory and the just beautiful sense of the glory of god in the sacred liturgy pope saint john paul ii said every mass is celebrated on the altar of the world could you express how the sacred liturgy is celebrated on the altar of ukraine in these days um According to the Byzantine liturgical theology, divine liturgy is a moment when a Christ himself, as a good Samaritan, as a healer, descends from the heaven to touch the wounds of his people. And that is a very special feeling when we celebrate divine presence of risen Christ among us amidst the dramatic circumstances of war. So we not only remember, we represent and actualizing his saving work. So divine liturgy for us is a moment of healing. It's a moment when we gathering our people and enable them to receive this divine touch because the main celebrant is Christ himself and he touches us not only with his words with the gospel readings but he touches us with his own body and blood According to, to the very ancient uh, um, understanding of, of the Holy Eucharist, Eucharist is like uh, uh, an uh, antidote against death. Pharmakon Athanasius is a medicine which uh, 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 saves us from the death, destruction and, uh, and, and eternal condemnation. So, how important today to be able to uh, open to the people access to this Pharmakon Athanasius. So, it is why without divine liturgy, we would not survive. Your Beatitude, uh, Pope Francis, in one of his recent uh, reflections on the Catholic liturgy, says that we are plunged into the Paschal mystery in the sacred liturgy. Could you discuss a Catholic theology and spirituality of dealing with trauma in these war circumstances of Ukraine? Obviously, trauma flows through the Paschal mystery. Of course, um, war is a very traumatic experience. We are all wounded. But we do understand that uh, uh, wound of people of Ukraine are the wounds of Christ himself. So, 
uh, Pope Francis also used to say, um, used to um, encourage us not to be ashamed of the wounds of Christ. Yes. So we have to have a courage to face them. Not only to look at, but to deal with. Uh, almost 80% of Ukrainians today are wounded. So that's, that big trauma can be healed only if we realize this uh, um, Paschal mystery of Christ himself. Because little children in uh, those moments where we are under the constant uh, rocket and missile shelling are asking to their parents, where is God? Where is God when Russians constantly kill us? You can answer, He is with us and He is present among us to be killed and to resurrect again with us. So serving to the wounded people of Ukraine, we serve to Christ himself. And we, and we can feel this even in mm, the mystical way that Christ uh, uh, give this possibility to be wounded again in Ukraine. We cannot comprehend this fully uh, with the human mind, but he is with us. And his presence is a secret of the Ukrainians' resilience. Yes. Your Beatitude, you spoke about a recent trip to Rome and a meeting with the Holy Father that was ecumenical and interfaith and had a very profound impact on all the participants, including our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We are very blessed in Ukraine to have an outstanding cooperation between different churches and even religions. Because Ukrainian society is multi-ethnical and multi-confessional and multi-religious society. Perhaps we have a very old Armenian uh, uh, community. Armenians in Ukraine are not foreigners. They live with us for, for, for centuries. We have very vibrant Jewish communities. We have uh, very vibrant uh, Muslim communities as well. But also we, we have different uh, jurisdictions of the Orthodox. We have two different traditions of the Catholic Church, Byzantine and uh, uh, Roman Catholic. Uh, we have different kind of, of um, Protestant denominations. But when we came in such a, I would say, uh, 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 interesting, very specific uh, group to meet Pomp together, he was surprised and he made a statement saying, well, seeing all you together, I have to say that when mother is under a pain, all children come together to save, to assist, to alleviate the wounds of your mother. And I can see, he continues, that there is no anymore uh, an Orthodox Ukraine, Catholic Ukraine, uh, 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 Jewish Ukraine, Muslim Ukraine. No. All children are united in order to save your mother. Mother Ukraine. <laughs> We were impressed by those very, mm, very special, very, very kind and touching words of our father, Pope Francis. Your Beatitudes, you mentioned, I believe the head rabbi had some very profound words in that meeting. It was very interesting because we had a meeting with the Holy Father just day before uh, uh, the day when the uh, whole world com commemorated 85th anniversary uh, of Holocaust. It was a day of commemoration of the victims of the Holocaust. 
And uh, during our meetings, Chief Rabbi of, U of Kiev and Ukraine, uh, uh, Jacob Dov Bleich, made some, some sort of uh, uh, parallel between uh, uh, Holocaust uh, that happened with the Jewish na nation and uh, this uh, uh, Russian genocide which is going on right now in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And he remembered that in each year, in day of commemoration of Holocaust, whole world is repeatedly saying Never again. But it happened again in Ukraine. And we have to say again, never, ever again. Those words of Chief Rabbi of Kiev and Ukraine made an impression in Vatican. <laughs> what... Um what would you like Americans who are listening to this, uh, your wonderful words, what, what are some of the things you'd like to, you've conveyed so much already, but is there anything very specific or special that you'd like to say to Catholic Americans and Americans in general? I would like to take this advantage, this possibility, this occasion to express our deep gratitude to our friends, to the Catholics uh, in the United States for your outstanding help and solidarity. Thank you for not giving up Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your sensitivity toward our pain. Thank you for your humanitarian help. Uh, because of worldwide Catholic solidarity during this ongoing humanitarian crisis, nobody died of hunger or freezing. It is incredible, because right now it is a winter in Ukraine, a pretty cold, <laughs> Your Excellency. We are without electricity, with no heating, but because of this um, very warm worldwide solidarity, we, until now, were able to prevent that this humanitarian uh, 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 crisis will become humanitarian catastrophe. So, because of your solidarity, those uh, tragical events in Ukraine were alleviated. So, thank you very much for helping us, for being with us. Thank you for your outstanding help, help and solidarity. Thank you, your beatitude. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, you generously received the invitation of the Archbishop of Ukrainian uh, Catholic Church in the US, Metropolitan Boris Godziak, and come here, decided to come to Ukraine to show your solidarity, your love, your support, together with Sister Dana uh, Markham, she, who is the head of the US Catholic Charities. Would you be so kind to tell us uh, during your trip here, you arrived a couple of days ago in, in, in Lviv, you stayed a day there, and then it's the second day in Kyiv with all the meetings. What's your impression of the, of the situation in Ukraine and uh, with the conversation with the church leaders? Uh, would you be so kind to share with us? It uh, is just, uh, I personally am deeply inspired uh, by his beatitude, by Archbishop Gudziak, by the work of charities and Sister Donna uh, uh, representing Caritas. It's been a very profound and powerful experience of prayer flowing through the sacred liturgy, throwing, flowing through the cross of Jesus Christ. And um, I think the big, just the inspiration that the Catholic Church in Ukraine, the inspiration that Ukraine gives to Catholic Americans, but to all Americans, is a special gift and a point of reference for courage, fortitude, and perseverance in every challenging situation in the world. It's a great uh, experience of the power of the cross, the mystery of the cross, and how the glorified wounds of the risen Christ touch the wounds of war. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I know that the uh 
today we are, we are going to go to see those destroyed towns near the capital, Bucha, Borodyanka, and also meet with the, with the people there, with the, uh, with the pastor of, uh, of a parish of Ukrainian Catholic Church in Irpin. Uh, so it will be really an uh, emotional uh, trip for you and for Sister Dana. Exactly. Yes. It will be uh, very powerful. Pope Benedict XVI, who we remember, uh, always talked about um, biblical realism, that if we want to be in touch with the realities of the world, we need to be in touch with the Old Testament and the New Testament. Of course, these trips of the realities in the atrocities, well, we will experience the places of great atrocities. We will experience them through the reality of the inspired sacred scriptures and lift our hearts to God. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Before we let you go, Your <laughs> Excellency, let me present you with small uh, symbolical gifts. Uh, my friend used to say that all genius ideas uh, come when we drink coffee. <laughs> uh, let me present you with a small cup. Um, we will remind you about uh, uh, this, our studio of, of uh, Jeve TV, live TV of our church. Because of this um, media, we can be in touch each day with our suffering people. Jeve TV is supported generously by the Knights of Columbus. Oh, of, very of, nice. Of uh, uh, USA. So let me present you with this cup and coming back home, drinking coffee. Please remember us. <laughs> Uh, think about us and I'm sure that you will receive some inspiration again and some genius ideas will come and will enlighten you. And particularly when the coffee is especially strong. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We keep us alive. <laughs> and your Thank beatitude, you. we will be sending you a Catholic Faith Network mug in exchange and we'll be in solidarity through our coffee mugs. Very good. Your Beatitude, may I ask you to, to give the blessing maybe to the viewers um, in the United States and all the Thank people you. of good faith. Yeah. May Almighty God bless you with His grace, with His mighty, with His eternal love. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.